tetrahedon. Tetrahedon is a new type of crane. Now, first of all, you might think, why do we need a new type of crane? Well, it's the offshore wind industry that demands for it. Because for offshore wind turbine installation, you need to lift very high, but you don't need the horizontal reach so much. So if you look like to the type of cranes that have been used right now, these are actually cranes that developed for the oil and gas construction industry. And here you see that crane on a jacket vessel. On the right photo, you see that that crane is using the full length of the existing jacket vessel. So if we make a simple side view of that, and gonna do some, some basic analysis here. So the boom of this crane, because these cranes are typically called luffing boom cranes or luffing jib cranes. The boom of this crane is indicated by a blue line and the luffing mechanism, the luffing tackle is indicated by the dash dotted line. Then the luffing tackle will lift the boom and it will rotate, rotate around the point at the forward bottom of the crane house, like this. So it's very simple and here you see that there's basically um, a relation in between the length of the vessel and the height that the vessel, including the crane, can lift. So we wanted to break that relation. And what we did actually, we only uh, repositioned the rotation point of the living mechanism. The living mechanism here is still the blue boom, but we're gonna replace it by an orange 3D triangle. And the rotation point is now located at the aft top of the crane house instead of the forward bottom of the crane house. So it's a very simple change. It's just a change of the rotation point. And by that change, here you see, we can simply lift higher. So if I compare it with the previous situation, then now you can see it's simply lifting to the top of the slide instead of to third height of the slide. So then if we zoom out and we go to a 3D isometric view, here you see that this orange triangle in 3D is a 3D triangle and that shape is called a tetrahedron and the company is called after that shape. So on the left of course you see that shape, on the middle you see the center structural center lines of the, uh, of the uh, tetrahedron drawn into a structural drawing of the crane and on the right you see that that shape also has a very efficient force flow. So the force flow uh, through that tetrahedron shape consists of pure actual forces compression and tension. So there are two changes. There is a change of rotation point and there is a change of structural force flow. But then at the end, if you see the crane luffing, which was the motion you just saw, and now the, the motion slewing, and at third, the motion hoisting, it's just three simple motions that are already proven and actually already within every crane uh, in the industry right now. So this crane is only using three motions to obtain uh, uh, to, to lift any object in a 3D space and three motions is the minimum motions for that. So that's why we say simply lift 50 meter higher. It's very simple, but <laughs> actually what you need to do is quite a lot. So in 2018, we started with the drawings and we patented the crane. Then in 2019, we completed a uh, parametric tool. We call it the uh, ACE, Automatic Crane Engineer, in which we can um, easily uh, adjust to changing requirements and still maintain the quality of our calculations. That's important because you can imagine as well in 2020 we had to go through certification process. So from that Norska Veritas we obtained approval in principle and besides the design verification on their uh, 0378 lifting appliances code. This year we are in discussion with wind turbine builders how we can optimize the installation process but as well get the tetrahedron crane principles into their installation requirements, which are typically uh, tender documents in offshore wind farms. Um, then, on the other hand, we are now in discussion with um, subcontractors about producing the crane for a launching project. But we are here to pitch, so let me focus on that. So the question is, why should tetrahedron win the Innovation Award 2020? Well, we hope that you agree with us that it's a pretty creative design. And as an engineer, it's always very difficult to come up with a simple design for a problem. It's way more easy to, to think of something more complex. That's what engineers typically do. Then at second, you need to have the courage. So um, uh, the courage to, if you have a brainstorm and you have a new ID, then to really decide to invest time in it and to develop it while your clients are not explicit 
asking for it, it takes you some courage to do that. And um, the third as well is the stamina. So it's a multi-year program to bring this to the market. And this is an established market, highly regulated. So it takes years to, um, to work on it and um, keep on believing in your ID. And as uh, Mark Palfast uh, already quoted uh, Jan van der Tempel, having a good ID is one, but then bringing it to the market is the second. So it takes stamina. So after all, it's up to the voter now. Do you think that Tetra Hedon is worth the TKE Windtop Say Innovation Award 2020?